first of all, thank you um, to the organizers, the organizers, sorry, for having accepted my uh, contribution to the to the to this session, and um, I'm very also happy to be here. I only have 15 minutes, so I'm going to be <laughs> as fast as possible. I'm going to start from a little bit far away, uh, and uh, precisely from the um, Saul landmass, so the Australian and New Guinea landmass that uh, experience a very um, early uh, uh, peopling. And recently, in 2017, there's a publication on nature, very interesting, that even uh, bring back the date to um, incredible 65, around 65,000 BP. And uh, to do that, uh, the modern human, anatomically modern human, um, needed to uh, cross uh, quite big uh, sea uh, uh, parts, which, which was more, uh, more than 100 kilometers. And uh, this is just uh, one slide. I go back to our, to our topic very, very fast. Because if we go in comparison with what happened in the uh, Mediterranean, which is much smaller sea, much, much less dangerous even than the, than the Pacific Ocean, of course, in prehistoric times, um, th there is a lot of activity already certified, for example, from uh, 11,000 um, 11, uh, BP. This is the obsidian from Melos. We found it uh, all around the place. There is also, um, for sure, a sea crossing of about 100 kilometers in the early Neolithic between Sicily and Malta. But for example, in the, in the Balearic Island, there is no uh, tracks of any Neolithic activity. This is just to say that, of course, uh, we are talking about the establishment of regular navigation routes, of course. Huh? So it's something that um, can prove the fact that the Mediterranean was really used you know, as, a, as uh, the famous definition of liquid highway. You know? But what happened before the establishment of these regular navigation routes? This is something that I'm going to talk about, focusing mainly, of course, on the um, um, Sicilian region. This is my, my topic for the day. I just want to mention, and uh, I did also by talking with a colleague one second ago, that the, at the moment, the most uh, plausible and first um, human occupation of an island in the western part of the Mediterranean is the um, Sardinian and Corsica uh, sites. There are two, actually, they are both discussed in the literature, of course, but and of course, Fontana Nuova, Riparo di Fontana Nuova in Sicily, I, I will talk about that in the second part of my presentation. So now I want to um, very briefly um, discuss about um, what can we um, try to know about the um, uh, peopling of an island without having uh, clear archaeological uh, remains. And there is a very wonderful publication. It's, I, I think it's a, it's a crucial publication from Leppard, a fellow from Cambridge University in 2014. And he um, used the um, possibility of um, analyzing a final turnover as a proof of a human people. And this is, of course, um, a proxy for the um, arrival of um, hunter gatherers uh, in, a, in a closed uh, environment, like an island, maybe, uh, as a, of course, as a, as a possibility to prove uh, the presence of. Uh, of um, of human occupation. This is something that, uh, of course, I will limit, as I said before, only to um, Sicily and uh, also to the late phase of the Upper Paleolithic. I don't want to talk about Lower Paleolithic or Middle Paleolithic because, of course, this will eventually take also too much time and it's outside the scope of this presentation. So at the last clash of Maxim, around the, the last clash of Maxim, we have actually in Sicily a final turnover. So this might be uh, exactly the case for proving the arrival of, um, of um, um, humans or human occupation, stable human occupation. There is, though, a problem, which is the pecu peculiarity of Sicilian geography. As you well know, of course, many of you are, are actually coming from the island, but not all of you, but um, there is a small strait separating uh, Sicily from the European landmass. It's a so-called Messina Strait, which in the narrowest point is uh, a little bit more than three kilometers wide. And uh, in that publication that I mentioned one second ago, Leppard actually refuses to discuss about Sicily because he described it as a quasi-insular. Huh? So he says, like, I'm not talking about Sicily because it's <coughs> almost not even an island. Actually, he was quite right because a publication from 2014 by Antonioni and colleagues established, in my opinion, without any doubt, that at least for 1.5 thousand uh, years at the last glacial maximum, Sicily was not an island. So there was a land bridge, and uh, so it's true 
that uh, there was this um, um, of course, condition, geographical condition that connected the link bridge, connected Sicily with, with the Italian landmass. These are the consequences on our, um, um, of course, um, on the environment. And uh, these consequences have been very um, precisely investigated also before the land bridge was um, clearly approved. Uh, there is a publication in 2008 from uh, Massimi and colleagues. And uh, I would like very briefly to read this, 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 uh, this sentence, even if it's going to take too much time. In isol isolated system, no apparent correlation occurs between climatic oscillation and changes of final diversity. On the other hand, and this is our case, if an island is close to the continent and separated by a rather shallow Z corridor, our case, the combined effect of climatically forced dispersal and glacio eustatic controlled formation of land bridges may cause dramatic effects on faunal diversity and composition. So if we go back to that uh, faunal turnover that I was mentioning before, as also my senior colleagues uh, notice, we might justify it more easily by the existence of the land bridge than by the, um, so to say, responsibility of hunter-gatherers. Of course, we cannot be sure that uh, Antergas did not play a role in this, uh, in this uh, final turnover, but um, at least there is a second, a second um, explanation that does not involve the human occupation of Sicily. And we have to take it, this into account. So before I go to the second part of the presentation, which, as I said before, is going to be focused on uh, Fontana Nova, I just wanted to make a small sum up, sum up wrap up of what I've been saying so far. So Western Central Mediterranean seafaring sea crossing activity has been proven to be very slow during the Pleistocene. It's very um, limited to a few cases, and some of these few cases are actually also um, doubtful. No? So Sicily was, has been proven to be, not to be an island for at least 1.5 thousand years around the LGM. This is a very important um, uh, point uh, for discussing any uh, possibility of a po population that involved or not involved the seafaring and sea crossing activity. And then, uh, this is a direct consequence of the previous point, around the LGM, Sicily experienced a clear final turnover that as we this has been established by uh, Leopard, among others, might be a mark for the stable human occupation. But in this case, as I already said before, there might be also another explanation. Very good. So, so far I've been uh, talking about last glacial maximum, so around 22, 21,000 before present. And I'm sure that so many among the audience will asking like, okay, what about Riparo di Fontana Roma? Uh, that's a good point. Riparo di Fontana Roma has been um, presented in the literature until very recent uh, time as uh, um, the um, first and most important uh, example and of um, human peopling of an island in the Western Mediterranean before the last glacial maximum. I will bring here this uh, very brief example from uh, this um, um, best-selling, wonderful book by Broadbent from 2013, The Making of the Middle Sea, in which um, uh, he mentioned the, the, the site we are talking about, Riparo di Fontana Nuova, and says that it's very important, unquestionably rather important, so it's very important, and it does possess one advantage over earlier claims of island occupation in the Mediterranean. It indisputably happened. So even the most recent literature take it as granted that uh, Fontana Nuova was, uh, and still is, um, a proof of a pre-LGM population of an island in the Mediterranean. Why is so important? First of all, because it's this, it will be the southernmost Aurignacian site in Europe, Second, because it's going to prove human presence on Sicily before the LGM. This is something that, as, as far as, for, for what I've said so far, would be like very um, striking. And then, of course, we'll prove an early sea crossing, sea faring in the Mediterranean. Uh, I will go uh, kind of uh, fast on that uh, because I don't want to consume like, all the time that, uh, that I have. Uh, the history of research of this site has been quite peculiar. Uh, there have been a first unsystematic excavation conducted by um, an amatorial um, archaeologist uh, or local nobleman. Actually, the findings have been reburied by this man, at least the human and final remains, and then they've been excavated in 1949 by the superintendent uh, for the um, antiquities. Um, it's, uh, this is um, the, 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 the remains, and in 1964, this is a very important point for our discussion, um, Laplace 
placed uh, the lithic industry uh, and attributed it to the Aurignacian, no? so before the Alpine. So we start with this um, um, first uh, attribution uh, that has been confirmed also in publication during the Hades and that have been also uh, placed in doubt by some uh, scholars during the 90s, in this case, Palma de Chesnol, of course, but that correctly finds the Aurignacian attribution highly problematic, mainly because of distribution of Aurignacian science in southern Italy, you know, but also because of the very peculiar characteristic of the lithic assemblage. I'm not going to talk about that during this presentation. The, 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 the turning point somehow on the attribution to the Aurignacian has been this um, publication from 1996, which added to the lithic, um, in, to the interpretation of the lithic, also another element that has to do with the faunal composition, and in particular is the absence of the Ecosidentines that might have been um, read as a proof of a pre lgm origin of the deposit. The last, um, um, the last um, somehow point in this history of studies is that, uh, is a, about 10 years ago, is that this site might not be finally Pigravetian, and uh, it's um, Martini and colleagues, they try to give another uh, chronological uh, somehow uh, um, yeah, attribution, which is the um, Epigravetian, which is much more likely because in Sisi we have a lot of Epigravetian. In this case, it would be the first phase of the Epigravetian. Very good. So as you can see, based on the lithic uh, typology and the funnel remains, this site have been really attributed to very huge uh, uh, time span. Uh, with dramatic consequences, because if this site is a reaction, this means that it's a, it's a, it's a scenario-changing site. Very good. Um, I had the opportunity to, uh, with, together with colleagues, to sample the um, faunal and human remains at the um, um, archaeological, archaeological Museum in Syracuse, and uh, um, our dates give the, uh, gave us a different scenario, completely different scenario. We, get, we have 10 dates, you can see there, uh, both the C14 and also um, calibrated with 95.4% uh, 95 of confidence, so double sigma. And uh, all the dates except one are very compact. It's at 800 years time span and it's late Mesolithic. So between 9.9 .9 and 9.1 calibrated BP. So coeval for, of course, um, people that are uh, confident and they know uh, the chronology in, in CC with, for example, Liar F16-18 in Uzzo or Molara individual one or, or Oriente in, uh, in Favignan. So there, is, there are some consequences of this chronology. First of all, I have to notice that, uh, and I'm going toward the end, that it's extra an extraordinary fact that the site with such a peculiar history of research that was already recognized, for example, by Palma di Cesnola, has been trusted as a solid ground to be a paradigm shift shifter picture. This is uh, so a little bit, um, um, somehow, um, um, too much confidence in this, in this site. So we, we have to um, co conclude that there is no proof at the moment of our Ignatian people crossing the Messina Strait and reaching such a southern latitude. There is no proof of Sicily being populated before the LGM. We have one old date, which actually is also a little bit far from the LGM, which is Riparo di Castello, close to Palermo. And then this is something that has not uh, really uh, that much to do with the um, chronology now, but it's very important as a, as a methodological suggestion that using only typological method of analysis for lithic complexes as a dating method might be dangerous especially in a contest like Sicily, where we have all the excavated sites and most important lithic collection have been often subject of a selective process. So this means that really the statistical basis might be uh, mined, undermined. So I think I can um, yeah, wrap up what I said so far in these two, um, somehow two parts of this presentation. First of all, yeah, we cannot be sure that no people, peopling happened and so on. There was no occupation before the LGM, of course. Um, in, the, in the publication of Leopard that, that I mentioned before, the, the author makes a very interesting distinction about different types of occupation. And some of them might also very well not um, be or have any, any um, um, how can I say, any um, um, remaining in the archaeological, in, in the archaeological um, record. So, for example, ephemeral kind of occupation. But 
with the data actually in our process, everything points toward a very late colonization of CC. What remains as an open question for me at the moment is that did it happen during the LGM when the land bridge was present, which means there was no sea crossing, sea faring involved, or based on the dates actually uh, available, uh, which are much later, <laughs> Did it happen in a moment in which the land bridge was not there, which means once again pose the question of sea crossing when not even seafaring? Thank you very much.